Hello everyone and thanks for stopping by my channel. I am Serge T and in this video I will be talking about Monday Night Raw for the month of June 24th, 2024. Now this is the week following the debut of the Wyatt Six and The Miz is replacing Pat McAfee. Oh joy, can't wait to hear what he has to say on commentary. And then McIntyre is in the ring right off the bat. And what does the quitter have to say? He talks about what he did last week, which is the talk of everybody. Everybody's talking about the fact that he quit. And he right off the bat says that, you know, he is done with the people who chant the CM Punk chants. And he talks of all that was done to him and he is no longer, you know, he just doesn't want to, put up with the people who chanced his name after all that was done to him. Remember what Punk did to Drew? He's reminding all of us. And then he talks about being in possession of the bracelet that belongs to Punk. Remember, he took it off of him last week, which bears the name of his wife and his stupid dog, Larry. Now, that's Drew's words. I never would say anything ill of a dog, you know. And then McIntyre proclaims he will be entering the money in the bank and wants Punk to watch him and be alone and in pain as he does. He wants Punk to be wallowing in his sorrow and all that stuff as Drew McIntyre enters money in the bank. Is he insinuating that he's just going to go straight to the... Um, you know, it's a front line and he's going to be added to the field of those who will be competing at that match. I don't know. And then he talks about that bracelet. We know who that, what that bracelet bears. And he says that it's going to be who represents him in, you know, who will be in his corner. And, you know, they're in my corner now, now that he has the bracelet. And man, Drew is hitting Punk low and knows this will eat at him. But it may also fuel Punk, fuels Punk's return so that he can beat his arse. Now, a revisiting of the horror and chaos of the Wyatt Six, led by their leader, Uncle Howdy. And this was shown on SmackDown, and it is still the creepiest video package I've ever seen. You know, they showed it there, they showed it here, and it's the same effect. I mean... Now, a vehicle is seen arriving, and we see Chad Gable, who is surrounded by security. And what is the focus on Gable all about? I mean, is he to be recruited as a sixth member? I mean, I don't know, folks, but it's just peculiar to me. Now, I'll bring this up. A lot of people, you know, people are going to be wondering why they're specifically focusing on him and all these other guys. Go through was there, right? Triple H. These are people that, I don't know, when it comes to Gunther, when it comes to Gable, they are pretty much pushing their weight around. They're, they are heels, treating people badly and wrong. Maybe the Wyatt Six are all about good in the sense that they're there to right the wrongs in WWE. Triple H has been known in the past to bury people and... You know, you had all those people who were fired. I mean, even Bo Dallas himself was. Even Bray was. Is he looking to... That's the reason why that these guys were attacked. Amongst the others as well. Just putting that out there. Now, Braun Breaker is set for ring, in, for ring action. And who will be his opponent? Well, it is Ludwig Kaiser. So, am I to understand that Breaker is a tweener? I mean, riding the line of heel... And babyface, I mean, he came out and he was pointing at people like, hey, you know, that stuff. I'm thinking, what, what's this guy? A, a really, he's been, what do you call that? He's been portrayed as a heel, doing the heelish things, right? In the past number of weeks. Or is it a matter of Kaiser, you know, he interfered in his match and he's going to make him pay, right? That could easily be the case. And then backstage, Kat Kell looks to talk to Gable. And at least she mentioned his forehead wound. 
Maybe I believe he looked like he had a band-aid on it or something like that. You know, so much for uh, Chad Gable being killed last week. And then Jackie Redman talks to Kaiser, who said Braun Breaker. And then he quickly, you know, he said Braun Strowman. And then he quickly corrected himself and said Braun Breaker. And to see, that's the very reason why uh, maybe you don't have two Brauns on the same brand. Now, is he going to prove that he is destined for greatness? And that Breaker is no... Ludwig Kaiser. I meant to say that uh, Ludwig Kaiser is going to prove that he is destined for greatness. And that Braun Breaker is no Ludwig Kaiser. And Miz said that back in the day, a certain individual was referred to as annoying. And that was him. And now it's Kaiser. But Miz, even after 20 years, you still are annoying. And now, so this is another physical match. Hard-hitting and deliberate. And Miz on commentary is actually a good fit. He may be starting a gig that maybe in the future, near future, once he retires, maybe just is their way of put, you know of transitioning him into the commentary booth. He's done everything that he possibly can, proved a lot of people wrong, proved the naysayers wrong. When he first came to WWE, they just thought that he was just another reality star looking to ride the coattails of a WWE career, but he proved a lot of people wrong. A lot of people did not like him at first. I didn't like him at first. I still kind of somewhat don't, but I can respect the guy for what he has brought to the to the industry and what he has done for his career. You can't knock him. You can't really knock him for what he's done. But now onto this match, and after all the momentum of Kaiser and taking it to him, Braun positions Kaiser on the announce desk, like he did with Sheamus, and he drives... He dives from the apron and connects with a diving clothesline. Like what impact? And speaking of impact, Braun breaks through Kaiser's attempted clothesline and off the ropes connects with a reverse back elbow. And then soon after, he hits a Frankensteiner to Kaiser as he is seated on the top turnbuckle. That is something that I'm, I'm like, what the, you know what I mean? Like your mouth is just dropped open. Your jaw hits the ground. Like he just He just jumps on top of that. The top turnbuckle with ease, and then he points to people, and then he does the Frankensteiner. But then it ends up on the outside, and then Kaiser hurts Breaker, and as he looks to run Breaker through the steps like he tried to do with Sheamus, he is met by a high knee by Sheamus, drawing a DQ win for Kaiser. And then as the Celtic Warrior looks to deliver a power bomb, he is speared by Breaker, driving both Sheamus and Kaiser to the floor. Then later on, you're going to see this, what Kaiser, not what Kaiser, but what Breaker is going to do about the situation. And then the Judgment Day, they're enjoying the gifts of Liv Morgan. And Priest tells the boys that they need to take care of the Strowman problem because he has had his way with them and that he has. I mean, you see those guys and they're playing PS5, the WWE 2K. I guess she gave them that and then she sent... Dom a text. I can only think it's a sext or something like that where there's like they're all looking at it. You know, Carlito's eyes are wide like this. Like, I don't know what they're looking at, but it must be something, you know, you know, an NSC, you know, what's that? Not safe for work, I guess you could say. But up next is a Money in the Bank qualifying match. It's Lyra, and Lyra Valkyria comes out first. And I dig her music, her ring interest, and of course, Lyra herself. She's a star. I love when she just sits there. She does that pose with her hand and all that smoke's coming up behind her and stuff. And, you know, the crowd's into her, you know. And I didn't see hear much of a pop, but at the same time, you know, there were people who were there. So I'm glad that she is getting her due here. And on the main roster, she's been on a roll. She came up short in the Queen of the Ring tournament, but uh, I think she'll do very well for herself if she does qualify, you know, to go to Money in the Bank. But then let's talk about Braun Breaker. Like I said, he pounds on Adam Pearce's door and he is tired of Sheamus and Kaiser interfering in his matches. And then Sammy shows up right behind him and they both agree to an intercontinental title match at Money in the Bank. I mean, Sammy looks at Pearce and says, hey, Adam, make it official. And that he does. And he makes it official. And later on, it's announced that it is official for uh, Money in the Bank. Now, Kyrie Sane enters the arena, and she is a fave of mine. 
She's a favorite of mine too, but as of now, she seems to just be there and not doing much. And that's kind of a shame because she's very talented. Don't understand why they're putting her in a situation that they're putting her in, but I guess it maybe it's just a, a way for just her to be there, to be featured so that people don't forget her and people don't think of her as just a waste of time. There's some people that do, but I don't. It's just the way she's been booked. Yeah, it's kind of a the waste of how she's been booked. And then the last to enter is the quintessential bridesmaid, never to be the bride, and that is Shayna Baszler. And the one thing that these ladies all have in common, all three, they are for all former NXT women's champions. Now this match is competitive, a lot of offense, and these ladies are getting it all in. And even though Shayna Baszler had the Kira Fuda clutch on Lyra Valkyria, Lyra slips out of it. And then uh, Kyrie goes to hit the insane elbow on Baszler. And then Lyra delivers Nightwing to secure the victory and move on to Money in the Bank. And they're like, damn, I'm so happy for Lyra because Lyra is killing it on the main roster. And um, i trying to remember, who is it that she hit? She hit it on Baszler. Baszler took the pinfall from Lyra. Trying to remember, but if that's the case, Baszler again, eating losses, eating L's. And that's how we're going to continue, WWE is going to continue to book her. Even if it was uh, Kyrie, you know, trying to remember, you know, my memory's slipping sometimes. But regardless of wh whoever it is, which, what, whatever it was, it's not good for both of them, especially if it was uh, Shayna, because she can't keep eating L's and expecting us to give a fuck about her, you know, because I want to, but keep booking her like that, you keep, keep booking Kyrie like this, and all that stuff is just, who cares? Yes, it's Lyra's time, and I'm happy for that, but she has a long way to go. How long does uh, Shayna have? Like I've said before, she ain't getting any younger. So she needs to have her flowers now, as people like to say, and not just be, uh, like I said, the quintessential bridesmaid. She's never the bride when it comes to uh, moments in WWE. Now, Liv is coming to the ring, and boy, she has been a little troublemaker, has she? And Dom seems to be enjoying it, maybe. I mean, who wouldn't? And then the Chief Content Officer, Triple H, announces that the Royal Rumble in 2025 which will be taking place on February the 4th. And at SummerSlam and in WrestleMania, they're going to take place at the Lucas Oil Stadium in Indiana. They're in Indiana tonight, so you know that they're hyped because they're getting these major three top uh, pay-per-views in WWE and PLEs in WWE schedule, and they're all going to come to Indiana. And old Dominic says live. And she uh, got into the ring and gets his attention. And she definitely got it with a certain text she sent. I said that earlier. And she insists that Rhea never got him any gifts. And then she has a very special gift for him. If he comes out and we hear, then we hear Selena Vega's music. I mean, she was saying, oh, Dominic. You know, trying to be a little tease and trying to get him out there so that she can give him a gift. But then Zelina comes out. Her music hits. And Zelina has a gift for us, and that is to shut Liv up. While Liv is chasing Rhea's sloppy seconds, that's what Zelina said in that Dirty D. She is also chasing the Women's World Championship. She said the WWE Women's World Championship. It's the Women's World Championship because WWE Championship, World Women's Championship is the one that Bailey has. You need to kind of remember that. I don't know. They keeps, she keeps saying that. I'm just like, oh, no, it's the World Women's World Heavyweight Championship. They're, they're different titles. Come on now. The Liv insists that the title means everything to her. And she took out Rhea. And sent Becky into early retirement for the title. Or she may have sent her to AEW or to another promotion because that's one of the rumors out there. As much all these people whose you know, contracts have expired or are about to or they're not renewing them. Who knows if Becky is going to come back? Uh, who's the other ones, right? I mean, what, 
for Wilder, Gable, uh, even Drew in the past, and like a lot of these people who are like are letting their you know ricochet let his contract expire. He's gone now. Some people are saying Samantha Irvin might follow him, but why? This her career. So I don't think that uh, what do you call it's gonna have her leave. You know, so I don't know. He might he might take some gigs nearby so that he could still be around his um, fiance, but who knows, right? And then Selena suggests that she put up the title in Indianapolis. Everybody cheers. And Liv says, nah, next week. And then Dom appears. And of course, the boo start up. And then Dom didn't like the gifts she sent. And then the crowd chants sloppy seconds. And then Dom tells Selena he wants to help her in her quest to challenge uh, Liv's title. For Liv's title. She, he wants to help her get the title because... Pretty much said, I don't want anybody, anybody but Liv. I want anybody but Liv to have the title. And then the two get into it, um, you know. And then it's broken up by Ray Ray comes in and he pulls Zelina off of Liv. And then Dom knocks his dad down. They're going to do that again? Ray and Dominic? I mean, they just keep bumping into each other. Is there going to be a final match between these guys? You know, I mean, at a major PLE. I mean, we'll find out about that in this, um, you know, video of mine. But it's kind of getting to a point where I think don't think Dom needs his dad, doesn't need the rub from his dad anymore. He's doing quite well, especially in this uh, thing that they're doing here. There's... Um, little program that him and Liv have. You know, is he starting to fall for her, but he's trying to insist that he's not? I mean, it's definitely a hard choice between Rhea and Liv. People have their choices. Me, I wouldn't be able to know what to choose if I was in that situation. You know? They, they, they each bring something to the table when it comes to being with somebody, being with a girl, having a girl for your girlfriend. So it's just like, what's going to happen, right? And now Kathy Kelly is still looking for answers and get in an update on Gable. And he is medically cleared to compete in tonight's Money in the Bank qualifier. He has one against Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed. Speaking of Bronson Reed, the name Bronson, that is the name of Braun Breaker. So he, he can't even go to his first name if they wanted to make him different from Braun Breaker. Because, I mean, Braun Strowman because Bronson Reed is, is has that name. So... I know. That's the reason why uh, I think uh, Kaiser said Braun Strowman and then corrected himself and said Braun Breaker. Because that's what happens when you have two Brauns on the same brand. Braun, brand, get it? No. And then we see a video package featuring Rollins. And it is shown that, that you know, his journey is shown. And that you can see that it's, it's that journey of his has been nothing but inspirational. Showing everything that he's done, everything that he's gone through. The title wins, the victories, the major angles that he's been in, the history he made at WrestleMania, being the first person to ever cash in the money in the bank. He did it in the main event against Brock and Roman Reigns. I mean, he's done it all. And sometimes I have issues with him sometimes, but I've never said that the guy sucks. I've always said that the guy has it. The guy is an amazing performer. And yeah, the, the, the sing-alongs and him laughing and him acting like the Joker and all that shit and him just acting on, you know, it, it kind of gets to you, it kind of grades on you, but I really personally don't let it get to me in the sense that I kind of go with it. Yeah, sometimes I might DVR, you know, fast forward it, you know, if it's getting too much into the damn singing song and stuff, because I hate that singing song and shit, you know. But uh, there's no denying what he brings to the table. And that was a really, really good uh, video package. Now, the Money in the Bank Triple Threat, threat call, Qualifier. Let me say that again. The Money in the Bank Triple Threat Qualifier is next. And Strowman comes out, who Cole, referen Cole, Cole references as one big SOB. Not as good as McAfee, but okay, I guess. I guess they can't say son of a bitch. You can hear last week that Pat McAfee got corrected because he... he Immediately went from, you know, big son of a bitch to a big SOB. So, I guess the language police is there in WWE still. Can't wait till they go to uh, 
Netflix because it's going to be uncensored. That's what was re- there's that little that report from Triple H that when they go there, it's going to definitely be a little bit on the salty side. It's not going to be uh, the language ain't going to be uh, stifled. You know, they could be able to say whatever they want to say. But more on that in the future, I guess. You're going to tell us more about it, but um, it's everything that we've all wanted. A little bit of edge, right? More edgier, the product. So that's that. Now, Liv gets our truth to put the tag titles on the line. This was backstage against Finn and JD. She's kind of playing on his, uh, you know, because, you know, apparently she's friends with with the truth or she knows that truth is a little bit you know you can kind of talk him into things because he's kind of out there you know and so she kind of took advantage of that and then she got him to uh at least think of the idea of putting on the line against finn and jd and then miz he's there he's on commentary he sees that cole's telling him what are you gonna do about it miz you know he's and he's like hold up hold up and he just goes out there and he goes back to the you know to the backstage area so that he can cut that off at the pass and i'm thinking come on miss like you got to get your you keep your boy in check there man because he's just putting you guys in situations that you shouldn't have to be in unless it's agreed between the two of you he just you know truth just goes off on his own you know he's in his own world and shit and then every time miss will try to correct him he just talks to Miz like he's making a mistake like oh no you don't understand and all that stuff I'm like going yeah he does understand you're jeopardizing their tag team titles uh-huh. now Big Bronson Reed joins Strowman and the Alpha Academy music hits and then Gable walks out with Mike in hand and he proclaims he cannot be killed he lives and will be not money in the bank Mr. Money in the Bank but he will be master in the bank and I swear Gable uh, I swear he should be out of action self his injury and then we then would have been replaced tonight, maybe with Otis. That would have made a a major, uh, uh, you know, meeting of uh, monsters, right? All three of them, three hundred fifty some odd plus pounders, pounders, right? Four hundred pounds, some of them, right? And I'm like, there's so much for a sensible scenario, but at least he is acting paranoid and looking over his shoulder. I mean, at least, like I said, he had a band aid on. At least he went out there and you see, you know. So at least they were selling it. Somewhat. But I guess, you know, they just got attacked. I guess a week is okay. It's enough to uh, to heal from that stuff. But maybe a lot of it is psychological, you know, right? These guys can just still licking their wounds but it's some psychological shit that's going under their head now they're getting fucked up psychologically and that's worse sometimes than physical now judgment day comes out to take out Strowman, and they are successful and the ref can't stop the match because it's a triple threat match and of course under triple threat rules there is no disqualifications and then in the end, we see Gable hit a moonsault on Reed and picks up the victory and advances to money in the bank. Or does he, as the lights go out and smoke enters the ring and we see Gable appear dazed as Abby the Witch, Sister Abigail, uh, you know, Nikki Cross is seen crawling towards him, but then heads out to the outside of the ring and places a box on the announcer's desk. We see in uh, Gable, he just slithers out. I mean, he's just like backpedals. He goes up against. He you know he backs into the damn corner. He just drops to the to the mat, and then he just rolls out. He ain't nothing having nothing to do with them. I mean, he's got PTSD already. I'm sure he got attacked by the the Wyatt Six last week. I mean, that ain't um, anything to be you know. I said, fuck it. I'm not gonna be around here. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Says uh, Gable. But that right there is, I love it. I love the intrigue. I love the drama surrounding the Y6. I love how, what they're doing. And slowly but surely just bringing things to WWE that we need. You know, this is, this all just resembles that of what, you know, Bray would have done. And kudos to these guys, creative and all these guys, being able to, Keep you know, I'm sure Bo is behind it. You know, Taylor Rotunda is behind this stuff. He knows how 
Bray thinks and he knows what Bray wanted. I'm sure they talked about it, you know, for, 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 for hours, for days, you know, stuff like that about what Bray wanted. And so he retained that and here you go. And it's really, really good. The people that are giving up on it and are talking shit about it, man, you guys just, I guess you guys can't be satisfied with anything really. This is different. This is something that we've all wanted. Bray's gone, but watching this, it doesn't feel like he's gone. His fingerprints are all over this, and he's gone. He's passed on. You know? Now, it is revealed that it is addressed to Pat McAfee. McCole opens it, and it's a VHS tape. And it says, play me on it. And then Michael Cole's like, well, we're going to try to find, go to the, you know, to the, the trailer there, the truck production truck and let's see if you can find a VCR or something like that you know I mean it's not going to be hard a billion dollar company you guys don't have a VCR on you I mean yes those things aren't in circulation but at the same time there's places that sell them so I don't know how they got it maybe they had somebody go out an assistant go and buy one I don't know <laughs> but then who knows if that's really played on a VCR they kind of Jazz it up a little bit to have the, the static and the blue screen and all that stuff to make it look like it's on the videotape. But I can look at that and go, that it's not. Because I've seen better filters and I've seen better things that make something look like it's played on videotape. But they tried, they did it, and it's it's about the presentation. And they did good. I mean, I'm not going to say they didn't. And then backstage we see Gable. He looks to make amends with the alphas and says sorry. But despite what he went through, Otis says that they still are through with him. They don't want to have anything to do with him. Maxine, she's very, very uh, compassionate to him. Sorry that he went through what he went through. And she said that she's going to try and talk to Otis. And then we see the Crees and Ivy Nile pop up. And that's an interesting thing because you see two guys and, you know... Tozawa and Otis with Maxine, they are pretty much on the outside looking in now because they're done. They don't want to have anything to do with them. But then you see another girl and two guys in Brutus and Julius and Ivy Nile. So are they going to replace them? Is this the, uh, the forthcoming of the new uh, Alpha Academy, the new and improved Alpha Academy? You know what I mean? You got two uh, collegiate athletes, collegiate wrestlers record breakers in their um, colleges when they were wrestling NCAA too and all that good stuff right Ivy Nile is a fitness uh, you know thing or fitness uh, expert herself she's in great shape why not man and another uh, Gable's tutelage I can't see nothing but just good things happening with that but you know he still wants to go get back with his old Alpha Academy so we'll see what happens with that very intriguing. I'm looking. I'm, really, I'm. I'm interested in it, and it has to be glued. Now the unholy union: Alba Fire and Isla Dawn in tag team action against Kaden Carter and Katana Chance. And in the end, we see the gory bomb performed by Alba Fire, and then a Russian leg sweep performed by Isla Dawn. A double team move by the tag champs, and it gets them the victory. But no time to celebrate as damage control attack. And Eosky delivers a statement to the champs with an over the moon salt on both Dawn and Fire. <clears throat> that was impressive. She nailed them with that. Just amazing. Katana Chance and I, Katie Carter, did put up a fight. They even did the cake stand. And I love that when uh, Katana Chance landed she landed flush on isla dawn i mean that you know landing her full body just bam right on her and you can tell that it hurt isla dawn because she was like holding her stomach and rolling around so they did good they tried but what do you want they're not going to win they're, they've been they've been they've been held back and they've been kept in catering for such a long time. They won the championships. Thinking. We're all thinking. Or at least I was thinking. Ah. Here we go. This is the way to develop. To build up the division. Center it around those two. Because they're like one of the most. If not the only complete tag team. That's been together for like three years. 
their whole time in in uh, NXT, and then they come to the roster, main roster. They win the tag team titles eventually. They don't hold on to them long enough. They even did that with uh, Bianca and uh, and Bianca and uh, Jade. How come they didn't keep it on them long? I get it. Give it to Isla Dawn and Alba Fire. Even though Triple H and some people said that they didn't do that because they were that's their hometown. Really? Come on. You don't give it to Piper Niven and you don't give it to Drew. You're gonna give it to somebody, somebody who's that whose hometown is uh you know, is Scotland. Right? But uh anyways that was a little yeah, it was a competitive match. It was okay. Uh, keep the interest on the tag team division of the women. And, um, yeah, they, they, they need to keep doing something. They need to keep on, you know, keep it on track. And they need to continue to show that they give a fuck about this division. Because it doesn't look like they do. They have spurts here and there, but then they just, they go forward and then they fall back a couple of steps. They go forward, they, come, they fall back three more steps. I mean, you know, keep focus on the damn road to where you want to go with this division and stop being distracted and going off course. Keep ahead, keep forward, you know. Now, we see Liv leaving the, day, leaving the Judgment Day's dressing room as Priest arrives. And we see Balor in there. He was the only one in there. And it looks like Finn was doing something he maybe shouldn't have been doing. What are you doing in there, Finn? Huh? What are you doing? Inquiring minds want to know. And then you see him pop up real quick when Priest got under. He assumed that Priest left, but he returned to retrieve his belt because he's going to address Seth Rollins. And to me, it looks, um, you know, it, it looks pretty sketchy, said Priest. But Finn said that Liv got Dom a match with Ray next week. And that JD, well JD, the Judgment Day, they get a tag team title shot tonight. So not all is bad, right? But I don't know. They know her intention. They know what she did to Rhea. What do you think Rhea's thinking as she sees these guys palling around with her? Now, Priest isn't. Priest is trying to tell her you need to get up, you need to stay back. But then these guys are going, well, live did this, live did that. But are they really like, you know, telling her, hey, get security to get her out of their dressing room? They're not doing it. They're not trying. They're just letting her in there. And they're accepting gifts from her and all that stuff. And, you know, Rhea's got to be fuming. You know, she's looking to beat all, all, all every one of these guys' asses. And I wouldn't put it past her. She's one tough girl. I think she could beat all these guys' asses up, you know. And then they're risking that. They're risking the wrath of uh, mommy there. I don't know. But now, backstage Miz confronts Truth about getting a tag team title match for them against the Judgment Day tonight. And, you know, Miz is not prepared. But then Truth tells Miz that, you know, hey, you know, I only look at you as a friend. Like, I guess he was saying to the, I guess Truth thought that he was saying that uh, I love you like a brother, whatever he was saying. But you know how our truth is. It's like, you don't know what's coming out of his mouth. You know, you don't know what's gonna what's in his head that's gonna come out of his mouth. And it's just all over the place. Like he's just a nut. But we love him, right? But uh yeah, he got missed in the compromising position, and now he knows that he's gotta put his title on the line. They might lose tonight. And then what? Now Damian Priest is in the ring. And it says it's humbling when he saw the video package of Rollins. And though he sees good things in Rollins, he doesn't want to become him. Seth's music hit and a sing-along commences from the crowd. Of course it does. And Seth looks like he raided Becky's closet again. Well, that furry spotted jacket anyway. I mean, the, and then those pants of his. Like one side was black and the other side was white. Very, very unique ensemble. But then again, what else do we expect from Seth Rollins? You know, he was pure white, classy suit last night. I mean, last week. And then he goes back to being, uh, you know, uh, Becky Lynch's, um, you know, trier on of uh, different looks for her. I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? He pulls it off. Don't get me wrong. 
And it's Monday, and Rollins lets Priest know it's Monday Night Rollins. And Priest says, all rise for El Campeon. You know, that's what Rollins says. That Yeah, Priest says, all rise for El Campeon, but he says it's all sing for Seth freaking Rollins. So as long as Priest is champ, Seth will never get it back. Rollins feels it's all bravado, and he is full of crap. He lets Priest know that without his boys, he wouldn't be still be champ, especially at Clash of the Castle, if it wasn't for Punk. He definitely would not be champ. He was one up last week by Priest, who granted him a title shot, but Rollins wants to one up Damien Priest, sweeten the pot by a side pit, by a side bet, like a cherry on top. If Priest beats Rollins at Money in the Bank, he gets his wish that as long as Priest is champ, Rollins will never challenge for the World Heavyweight Championship again. But when he takes the title back, says Rollins, just to see if he can stand on his own. Just to see if he can stand on his own. He's doing this. If he beats Rollins, if Priest, um... Hmm? <laughs> But when he takes the title back, says uh, Rollins, and just to see if he can stand on his own, he says that he is going to take the title back just to see if he can stand on his own. These notes are mine, I swear. He says, Priest will leave Judgment Day if he loses. And then Priest looks conflicted as Rollins says he wants to see if Priest can walk a mile in his shoes. What do you say, El Campeon, as Rollins giggles to himself, anticipates the champ, champ's answer. Damien Priest answers Seth by saying the Judgment Day need him more than he needs them. I'm like, what the F, man? The crowd reacts. Rollins reacts to that. And then he accepts the challenge. And then Gunther heads to the ring. And apparently he's not worse for wear after the Wyatt Six attack. He was attacked, right? I, I, I could vaguely remember he was on the stage, right? And he basically wished them both luck at MI Money in the Bank and may the better man win. And the better man out of them two will be the lesser man at SummerSlam. He was the one that was attacked, right? If I'm not mistaken. No cell. I mean, he didn't get a bruise or nothing or a bloody head like... Gable, at least they had a band-aid on Gable. But wasn't Gunter? I could be wrong. But then I read he was. But I guess you got I guess you just gotta take it to where it's just what it is is basically they were attacked and they're back. He had a week to recover. I guess that's enough time to recover. It's not like these guys were, you know shot in the head or you know bludgeoned by you know by fucking machetes and all that stuff you know i mean rambling rabbit you know eric rowan had that damn sledgehammer that i call it so i guess he used that to knock him out gives him a you know gives him a, a ringing headache in their head i guess that's all it was didn't say no the triple h wasn't even yeah, he made an announcement, but maybe it was that was before beforehand. But I didn't. I never thought about that. Like, did he make the announcement following the thing? Like a couple of days later, oh, yeah, make an announcement about uh, the, you know, where the the top three uh, PLEs are going to be. They're going to be in Indianapolis and you know, something like that with Royal Rumble next year. I don't know. I guess we just got to roll with it because it's all about what they're doing about the Y six and. That's just showing that they are not going to be discriminate against anybody. They're going to attack whoever they want to attack and be random about it and all like that. Now, the contents of the VHA step is played and it included Uncle Howdy. He says, are you happy? How do you feel since the loss? Do you feel forgotten? Do you remember who you are. And we see Bo Dallas answer, I'm nobody. I wonder if Bo Dallas is going to go by Taylor Rotunda now. 
We all know him by Bo Dallas, but I think Taylor Rotunda, especially the fact that his father, Mike Rotunda, in the wrestling business was known as that. How about you bring that name back instead of him being Bo Dallas? There you are, says Uncle Howdy. How did, it, how did you feel when your brother died? I mean, for them to bring that up, that is very, very just... It's something that WWE, man, I mean, they, yeah, they, they, they exploited people's deaths before, Eddie Guerrero and all that stuff, but this still is pretty fresh, and it's still kind of like, it probably was hard for Bo Dallas to really do this, or Taylor to talk about his brother, but then he continues, he answers, like, the most important thing in my life was taken away from me, like, nothing was ever going to matter again. Uncle Howdy says, don't you think you're exploiting your brother's legacy? Very good question. Bo says, all I ever wanted in my life was to be like my brother. If you see the that documentary they had, that thing about Bray Wyatt, you see that, yeah, he really looked up to him. And you could, you could tell by the, those words. And these words, everything that was said in this uh you know, tape that they played, it actually rings true. I mean, there's no, there's no uh, fabrication to it. It definitely is rea based in reality. He says, I looked up to him, and I wanted to be him. And I worked my entire career, my life, so I could have the opportunities to work there next to him. And we were going to, we were going to rule together and finally made it. We were there, and we had it. And it was taken away from me. There is no one on this earth that feels more hurt than me. From his loss, not one person on earth feels what I feel. But what am I supposed to do? Let him become a mausoleum? Let everybody forget what he stood for and what he fought for, what he believed in? When he said believed in, I, I don't know why in my mind I said I said believed. You guys can remember that thing he did? He was... Always saying that as Bo Dallas to Bo leave, right? Just momentarily, you know, but then I continued to listen. They wanted to forget about me. They wanted to forget about all of us. We made them remember. We made them all remember. And then Uncle Howdy says, yes, we did. And then the camera pans back and we see both Bo Dallas and Uncle Howdy seated across from one another. And then the video fades to blue, followed, followed by some static, and then an image of a buzzard. I guess that's what it was, because you know, I say follow the buzzard. I'm thinking, what bird is that? That's the only thing that would make sense to me. Maybe it isn't, it isn't a buzzard, but remember, they always talk about follow the buzzards, so I guess that's what it is. Very, very good uh, thing there, production there. Supposedly on a videotape, but what's important is what Bo Dallas. Tyler, Taylor Rotunda got out. That right there is reality. That is like how he really feels. He was released. So was Bo. I mean, so was Bray. And then the Firefly Funhouse, no more. So about that? That's I guess what he, I guess that's what he was talking about when he said they, they were trying to forget about us. You know, McMahon did a lot of damage to Bo to uh, well to Bo yes to Taylor but also to Wyndham to Bray. False starts, false pushes, push him here, then they, they, they don't push him there, they, they, you know, they, all these things. He could have been the next Undertaker. He could have been the one to take, you know, Undertaker's streak. He even said that on his interview with Chris Van Vliet, that he would have been glad. He said it, he said, he, he has said it before. I'm not sure if he said it on there, but on a recent interview, he did talk about Bray Wyatt. And the thing about it, though, is that he would have gladly given him the streak, you know? That he would have been the one to be the undefeated guy. Because he's the guy like the Undertaker that comes along every once in a generation. That's was that's what he was. That's what Bo, I mean Bray Wyatt was. And then he, McMahon just said, fuck it. I don't like you. I don't like your look. Uh, I'm just letting it stay here for, for the meantime. But I'm not going to push you seriously. That's pretty much what he said. But now we got Triple H in charge. And he's doing this. He's allowing Bo Dallas, Taylor Watunda... To just let him fly, you know, let him fly on his own, let him do what he wants to do and what he needs to do in order to bring Bray Wyatt's, you know, ideas to life. And you can't, you know, you can't knock Triple H for, for this stuff. You want to tr criticize him all you want, but 
he does some good things too. And this is one of them. But like I said, a very, very good, uh, well put together. And I'm glad that it seems like he, Bo Dallas, you know, Dale Rotunda got all of everything off his chest that he needed to say. Maybe he's got more to say, but this is you know, more than enough right now. And we'll see what he's, he does in the, in the future uh, when it comes to being uh, Uncle Howdy and what the uh, White Six are going to, you know, what they're going to do. Next, we have Karrion Cross versus Kofi Kingston. They're going to both face off without their usual accompaniment. And it said here that Cross has beaten six former WWE champions. Right to my mind, I thought, yeah, uh, Bobby Lashley. Who else? All right. And he looks to add Kofi to the list. And I'm like, please beat Kofi Cross. Kofi Cross. Kofi Cross, that's a that's a that's a, a good name for a new character, right? But let me say, uh, you know, please beat the uh, Kofi Cross, please beat him. And the backstage was being beat down by the final testament, and this distraction allows Cross to hit the final prayer and beats Kofi, and he makes it a seventh champion that he has beaten, seventh WWE champion. Makes Karrion Cross look strong. Kofi Kingston doesn't need to be. Doesn't need anything anymore. He's done it all in WWE. So put over Karrion Cross. That's pretty much what they're going to do now. They should do <clears throat> with Kofi. Put people over. You don't need to be given any kind of major push or anything like that. Because why? Why Why would you need that? So I like this. Karrion Cross continues to look strong. And now I'm sure people are starting to look at them in a different way now. Look at them seriously and not just like a bunch of jobbers who just, who gives a fuck, right? No, we give a fuck now. I do. Good for Karrion Cross, and congratulations to him on his victory. Now at Money in the Bank, Orton and KO and Cody are going to take on the bloodline in the sixth man tag. We saw what happened on SmackDown with the debut of Jacob Fatu. So we're going to see them... On the Bloodline side, it didn't say really if Jacob Fatu is going to be a part of that. But it might because he just debuts. So we want to see what he does in that ring. I mean, we already know. Those of you who are familiar with his work, that guy's a beast. That guy will make everybody, you know, just he'll just tear, he'll just tear apart everybody. And he's just that good. And then next week, Sheamus, McIntyre, and Dragunov, they're going to be in Money in the Bank qualifiers, as well as Zoe Starks, Dakota Kai, and Ivy Nile. And then Dirty Dom faces off against his pops, Rey Mysterio, and then Zelina Vega challenges Liv Morgan for the Women's World Championship. Why not at Money in the Bank? We all know that Zelina Vega's not going to beat her. Zelina Vega will never be a world champion in WWE. She might be a tag team champion. She might go back to NXT and win the uh, Women's North American Championship. You know. I mean, I might be surprised and she might win. But no, because they're holding this championship for Rhea. So Liv is going to keep it. Because who else is she going to compete against Rhea? But Liv, they're in a feud now. And they're making it even more worse for uh, Liv because she wants to mess around with Dom and Judgment Day. So when Rhea comes back, she's going to tear her apart. And uh, uh, she's going she's gonna to have to deal with uh, Mommy. Now, this is what I was saying to myself. An impromptu tag team championship match is in the main event. I meant, I mean, aren't the matches especially, especially the main event known ahead of time? So who wins this match? Do we care since it was just made tonight? No story, no build, nothing. Hmm. Reminds me of AEW and Tony Khan and how he likes to, you know, book his matches. Now there's all kinds of chaos and drama and Liv is in there. And then Carlito and Dom stick their noses in the match. And then Braun Strowman runs off the Judgment Day. Good on Big Braun. And then Liv, she's like... On the apron, and then she has Truth come on over, right? And then gives him a hug, and she's like, oh, thank you for... I think she was talking about the whole thing with Dom and all that stuff. She's just singing, you know, saying things in his ears that he likes to hear. And then she just drops his drops him neck first over the top rope, like guillotines him. 
And then Finn sees this and he drops Truth into the corner. And then Balor connects with the coup de grace and wins the tag team championships for Judgment Day. And I saw a little bit of a clip, not a clip, but a, a, a picture. And it showed uh, JD and Finn back in the day when you know JD was really young. He started training with under um, Finn when he was only 12. And it says that from master and from teacher and student to tag team champions. It's almost like it reminds me of when you know how Edge was a big fan of Hogan, you know. And then years later, they become tag team champions together. And it's a good thing to see, you know. And this is his first title, you know, JD. So I mean, on the main roster, anyways, because he is a former cruiserweight championship champion. But then that title has been defunct since I don't know. It got deactivated, so that's not even in. You know contention anymore but you do recognize it though so that's a good thing at least you got to recognize it because that is a championship in the past even though there's no longer in um it's all it's inactive now and it's no longer um you know seen or recognized anymore as a active title but uh that's good yeah i guess congratulations to them i mean they did it with the help of Liv morgan and i'm just thinking these guys are just benefiting from her help but then yet she's the one that took out Rhea. So I'm like, I'm saying, Rhea's looking at this and she's seething. And she's going to come back and she's going to smack all of them. All of them and probably start just throwing shit at them and just hitting them with kendo sticks and, you know, and stuff like that. And I don't know. She's just going to destroy these guys because she's seeing them, what they're doing. That's her number one enemy and they're allowing her. Is it because she's so beautiful and she's so... You know, disarming, right? And they, you know, and it's just like they're just being blinded by that. They're not thinking straight. I mean, Damien Priest is thinking straight. He wants her out of there. But remember what Damien Priest said? He said that the judgment they need him more than he needs them. That's kind of like a precursor to possibly them turning on him eventually. Maybe costing him his world title against... Um, Seth Rollins, who knows, right? They're going to listen to that and go, really? Even when he left that one time when, uh, you know, when we saw uh, uh, Finn Balor by himself with Liv, as Liv left, and then when Finn talked to him, left, Damien, I mean, Finn Balor had a look on his face like, like, man, what's your problem, man? Like, he was kind of annoyed with Priest, so you got to look at a lot of that stuff that happens, folks, and he's in a lot of the, the little innuendos and the little things here, Easter eggs or clues or whatever, and there's a possibility that it could this could end at, um, the judgment they could end soon. Maybe as soon as Money in the Bank. But anyway, uh, that's my video, so for those of you who stopped by and checked it out, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And until next time, take care, and I will see you in my next video.